Hello everyone. So today I'm working on this big old uh, Craftsman. What is it? A DG something S65500, and uh, <clears throat> it has a Kohler engine, 26 horsepower Courage engine, and it's been sitting for quite a few years. Will not start. Um, when I spray starting fluid in the air filter. Uh, it does start, but then it dies, and then it starts, and then it dies. Uh, so I'm thinking we have a fuel delivery problem inside the carburetor. Um, I suppose one thing I can do first is to test and make sure we have output from the fuel pump here. I'll show you how to do that. So let's test the fuel pump. <clears throat> okay, so there's your fuel line in and your fuel line out. So. Let's remove the fuel line out and see if we have gas pumping out of there when we turn the engine over. Because this pump is operated by vacuum pressure from the engine. So you always want to make sure that this line here, the vacuum line, is not cracked. <clears throat> All right. So I'm just going to turn the engine over a little bit here and see if we have gas coming out. Yep, so that tells us the fuel pump is fine. So the reason why it starts and dies uh, is because the carburetor is plugged. So, Okay, so let's get into this carburetor. To remove the hood, you just lift up on it while you're pulling, uh, lifting it up. There you go. And I've already disconnected the lighting wiring. It's just a plug that you disconnect. already removed the air filter. <clears throat> this is what it looks like here. And it's quite dirty. Um, yeah, so I think you're going to have to remove this whole cover to get to the carburetor. And I'm going to grab a 10 millimeter socket and an 8 millimeter socket to take this cover off. Well, I couldn't find my 8mm socket, so I'm going to use a 5 16 I think that'll work too. These are just plastic screws. I mean, metal screws, but they're for plastic components. And it looks like I you have to take off the yeah see these screws they're not regular bolts they're plastic screws okay and they're all the same so that's good and take that off looks like there's two back here on each side that's when I'll go to the 8 millimeter or the 5 sixteenths. People racing up my street. That's not good. I live in a quiet neighborhood, man. Kids racing around here, man. Run over my cat. So the screws in back are regular metal screws, so keep that in mind. And I'll get to the other side here. 
Yeah. So over on this side, I'll show you, we have a few more things to remove. Okay, so the good news is that the oil dipstick isn't attached to the engine cover. But we do still have to remove that one bolt that's back here. Yep, so it looks like that one there and the corresponding one on the other side need to go. And the one on this side. Okay, let's see if this cover comes off now. Oh yeah, very easy. Alright, now looks like we can get to the carburetor. So... It looks like there's a couple of 10 millimeter bolts way up in there or nuts I'm not sure can't see it's pretty deep up in there but yeah that's allowing that whole cover to come loose that's good there we go so one thing I notice now that I'm at this point um, the fuel solenoid right here, when you turn your key to the accessory position, not the start position, but the first position, you should hear a click from this little component down here. That's your fuel solenoid. And uh, I don't hear it. And I know the battery's charged up, so I'm thinking that perhaps that component's clogged up. Um, most likely the carburetor's gummed up. And we will find out. Let's disconnect the fuel line here. Sometimes if you twist it, it'll come off a little easier. Oops, don't lose any parts. And then it looks like I need to get a uh, Phillips head. There's a ground wire here we have to remove. Um, this is the fuel solenoid wire. You can just go ahead and unplug it for now. Ah, here we go. So this carburetor, we can just pull it off, but we're gonna have to pull it off and rotate it, I believe, to get it off the linkages. So here's how to get the linkages off. Um, on the end of the linkages here you have these little plastic components. Hopefully my camera will stay here. And they snap into place. So this one, you want to snap it out that way. And then, I believe, you can just pull this piece right out. There you go. And then you'll want to disconnect that spring. We still have a good view here? Yeah. All right, so that linkage is disconnected. So now we should just be able to pull the carburetor off and rotate it. <clears throat> We're still stuck up here. There we go. So pull it off and rotate it. And there we go. Don't lose the linkages. with this co Ooh, Pewee, I can smell the stinky gas coming out of this thing. Let's take a look inside this carburetor, shall we? Uh, it's a 19 millimeter to remove the fuel solenoid here. I could smell that bad gas. Yeah, so it looks like on this particular style of carburetor, the main jet is part of this fuel solenoid component. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, the main jet is definitely plugged. That's why this engine, why this carburetor won't run. So hopefully it's not too dirty. Um, and we can just clean things out and not have to rebuild this sucker. 
Watch how I remove this float bolt. Voila! Oops. Yeah, I guess I'm not that cool. Now this thing is so gummed up, this float bowl is frozen on here, so you want to be careful that you don't damage anything when you take this off. Uh, I think one of the things I'm going to do is spray a little bit of carburetor cleaner around the rim so it soaks in and in here a little bit, I guess. Why not? Hopefully that'll help loosen it up. <clears throat> There we go. I'm going to be careful and try and preserve this gasket and reuse it. Yeah, but see, look at all that stuff in there. See, your engine, your carburetor will not run with this type of sediment and corrosion in, the, in it. So we need to clean all of that out and unplug all of the yeah because you see the rest of the carburetor <clears throat> the rest of the carburetor looks pretty clean see it's just this float bowl that's contaminated and that's what float bowls were designed to do but eventually there gets too much stuff in there and they have to be cleaned out so i notice a little bit of corrosion around this edge here i'll make sure to clean that off i'll probably yeah, yeah, I'll take the float out too. See what's going on under there. So as you can see, on this side here, there's a, a jet you can remove to clean if you need to. This little brass one. But I'm just going to poke some copper wire. I'm just going to poke some copper wire down through there, make sure it's clear. As well as this one. And blow some air through there. Sometimes these float pins get stuck in here. If they do, just kind of work it loose. Uh, you don't want to break anything. Come on. Come on. Ah, finally. So, we can take the float off. And if you look at the condition of the float needle, you see it's also pretty varnished up. You might be able to reuse it, but uh, I'm going to get a carburetor rebuild kit and rebuild this carburetor. And you just want to make sure, like I say, all the passageways. You see on this end, there's the pilot jet here that needs to be clean. And you have this passageway, this passageway, this passageway. Just want to make sure everything's good and clean. So the rest of this carburetor wasn't real dirty, just the uh, the float bowl area. So I'm not going to worry too much about soaking it or anything like that because I think we're good. One of the areas you really want to get clean um, in a carburetor is the needle seat area, which is where the float needle goes down in here. I don't know if you can see that, but this one's pretty green and varnished up. So I want to make sure you don't want to damage it either because that's where all the the ceiling happens if you know what I mean so yeah it's starting to look better already but I have a nice soft q-tip here with some carburetor cleaner and I'm just gonna gently clean that area I'm gonna spend some time cleaning this out until it's spotless all right so it looks like this thing can come apart let's go ahead and take it apart I think I'll take that uh, main jet out first here. Right. So. Oh. Thing went flying, but it's loose now. So 
So this little component uh, is the component I was telling you about is supposed to click when you turn your key to the first position. And when it clicks, it's that plunger going down. It goes down like that. Um, but this one, oh, this one was stuck and wouldn't go down. But you see now it's starting to. Uh, so you want to make sure to clean this out really well too with carburetor cleaner until that's functioning correctly. And you can even plug it back into that wire on the lawnmower, turn your key, and listen for that click and watch this. Actually, you don't have to listen for the click. You can just watch this, see if it moves, so you know this is a good component. It looks like this other piece, there's some holes, passageways. You want to make sure it's nice and clean as well. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up this solenoid a little bit, this is what it looks like. And this little plunger here should be moving freely like that. So I think this component is good. It was just stuck from varnish inside the carburetor. So you see there's a spring down in there. Don't lose that. When you reassemble this stuff, just make sure you don't tighten this too tight or any brass component because they, they can break real easily. So just a little bit snug. Well, good and tight. Don't strip it though. Okay, nice and tight. Okay, so we were trying to get a carburetor rebuild kit from Kohler. And this is one of the many, 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 many reasons I do not like Kohler. Uh, apparently they've discontinued this carburetor after a few years. And you can't order the, uh, the $15 repair kit. They want you to purchase a $300 new carburetor. So, uh, I'm going to do my best to get things super clean. It looks like the float bowl O-ring was still good. Um, I'm a little concerned about the, the float valve here, that it's still good, but unfortunately we have to try to reuse it. So I just really want to make sure everything's good and clean. Um, I've wiped off the float needle quite a bit. Don't try to sand it. I've had uh, some people try and tell me that you can sand, but don't do it. Just buy a new one if you can, but we have to reuse this one, so. Make sure every last bit of corrosion is off before we put it back together. Okay, just like that. Put the float pin in place. Well, that float pin was being a little stinker, so I just needed to sand it down a little better to get it to go into place. Now this component, uh, you definitely do not want to over tighten. It will break. Trust me, it will. But you want it tight, just not break it tight. Once again, this is the 19 here. It's good and snug, and a little, little more. That should do it. Okay, I think this thing's ready to go back on the lawnmower. Okay, so let's figure this out. Um, all our gaskets are still good, so we're going to reuse those. I think what we need to do is hook probably the linkage up first, or the spring here. Definitely want to hook the spring and linkage up first. I think I'll hook the spring up first. 
it got a little bent, but just bend it back into shape. Okay, so both linkages are on. Looks like the black plastic clip um, disappeared. The one that goes there, so find it. There it is. And kind of tricky when you get all these linkages going here. I believe came in from the back. Yeah. Like that. You probably can't see it, but Basically, you just put it together the way you took it apart. Okay, so the linkages, I think, are in place. Try to get this carburetor back on the studs here. There we go. Looks like the clip came out a little bit. Not real easy to get everything into place at the same time. But, just be patient, it can be done. Alright. So as you can see, it's kind of a, you have to orchestrate everything at the same time. The little black clip kept popping out, but now that the carburetor is back on the studs, I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. So the spring got a little cockeyed in there, so I'm going to reposition it so it's happy. There we go. Put the ground wire in place. Gonna have to attach the solenoid wire wherever it went to. Oh, there it is up here. Now, I wanted, I wanted to show you um, how to test that solenoid. We weren't hearing it before when we were turning the key, um, but I bet you, and that's because it was all gummed up, but I bet you now we'll be able to hear it. All right, so I'm gonna turn the key to the first position. Hear that? Listen. Hear that clicking? That tells us that that fuel solenoid is working just fine. Attach the fuel line. Keep in mind, these bolts are the carburetor mounting bolts. They weren't very tight, or, or the nuts, they weren't very tight. Um, I'm gonna make sure they're good and snug. We are dealing with plastic components, so we don't wanna go too tight. But, we wanna go tight enough to seal everything up and stay in place. All right, I think we're good. And before we allow any gas into that carburetor, um, I want to make sure to clean out the fuel tank and replace the fuel filter here. We don't want dirty gas going back into the carburetor. As long as you can get the fuel line lower than the gas tank, which the fuel tank is right up in there, uh, you can drain it. So that's what we're doing. We're draining the gas tank, trying to clean it out a bit. So whenever you work on the carburetor on an engine that has a fuel pump, uh, when you put the carburetor back on, it's gonna be empty of gas. 
So you have to turn the engine over um, quite a bit to get fuel to start pumping and to fill up the carburetor before it would start. How I did that with this engine, um, I was turning the engine over, but I couldn't see that fuel pump working. I couldn't see any gas going into the fuel filter, so I ended up spraying some starting fluid into the air filter area. I still need to put a new air filter in there. And I would start it and it would run for a couple of seconds. I did that a few times and eventually this started to fill up with gas and I could see that the fuel pump was working. Um, but that's just a tip to let you know that after you reassemble you will have to uh, turn the engine over quite a bit to get that carburetor to fill up with gas first. Before so I filled it up with gas and uh, <clears throat> it's time to test this bad boy out. Looks like that carburetor is doing the trick, even without uh, replacing the float valve. <laughs> 